about life do what just happy with life yeah. happy go lucky yeah man that's me happy go lucky <laughs> yeah. uh, awesome. how have you been good good very, very yeah. good so we're, we're digging into mode seven is that what yeah. i hear yeah we can do that fuck yeah we're excited See, hang on a second here. Sure. I'm going to turn on the screen share now in advance in case you want to do something down the line. All right. Yeah, I, I just I just recorded over that funk track that I sent you. Oh, uh, yeah. And um, it does not sound like Alan. Uh, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> you know, it's like subconsciously releasing uh does not i literally have zero of that in and like every time i go to like a shape i see then it's like i can't make it back into my playing <laughs> it's like that's oh, how yeah. i feel I just slide into that sound for a second and i'm just like whoa the rest of what i know doesn't fit with this so it's gonna be it's gonna be a while yeah well that's cool man i mean you know uh it will come <laughs> yeah I, it, I was messing around with it and it's like all that stuff started to come out so um well we're excited to see it thomas already sent me his and uh the rest of the people are lazy oh uh, yeah thomas. lazy bombs ricardo's like doing taxes in portuguese i didn't even know they have taxes in that country but <laughs> Well, I would have mine done, but I'm freaking still working on the book stuff. So. Oh, what's happening with the book? Edits forever? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I finally got a really good editor. So, great. And, you know, fixing a lot of things, it's just little things like inconsistencies with like the way I write scale names and stuff like that. So. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I would assume that for an editor to like, that's just like a English language editor to be tossed into the mystery like that. A musician too. And he's, uh, uh, he's transcribed Alan a lot in the past. Oh, okay. So like, well, that's good. Anyway, give me a shout. His name's Luke Doyle. So anybody. Hey, knows Luke. Him? Good uh, job editing. And he's freaking killing it. So yeah. that's awesome. Been a godsend. You know, uh, hey man, uh, mode seven. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I'm just, uh, Nick was Nick was mentioning that I was working on a book, and it, yeah, it's, it's a fucking nightmare. Books, books are hard, it's so hard, it's so hard to write that shit. Yeah, man, I'll never do it again, not like that. that <laughs> <laughs> kind of you know, thing that's like that in depth and that long, and um. No thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, man. I hear you. Nothing but a nightmare. And it just takes away from, um, you know, me being able to practice and play and create and all that stuff, you know? So. Yeah. Well, I mean, but now you're book rich, so there's that. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> you're rich on. You're a famous author. <laughs> By the way, this is the first time since we met that me and Nick are taking like a sober lesson just because I forgot to eat my edibles. Uh, so if we're breaking character, but we'll see, maybe like we'll just absorb some of it. <laughs> right on, man. Yeah, I saw your thing with uh, Alex last night too. The oh, how, uh, did you like it? Yeah, it's cool stuff, man. Yeah, I mean, it was... Uh, yeah, I, I, I was really curious to see if he knows about the nine note scales, and he does not. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, just got to investigate it and see how it goes, if that's something you want to do, you know? Sure. I've, I found out a lot. I mean, yeah, like, certainly. 
the path is there now, right? It's like it's clear. It's clear to spend time with it. Like I'm really looking forward actually to because after this week we have discussed every one of the it's definitely like the nine note scales and like the messy end modes. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. So now it's time to I feel like go back to the major one and actually do it sort of gradually. Because it's like that, that first kind of run around the block to see what's there. You know, I feel like it's it's impo it's important to kind of see the scope. Yeah. The problem. I thought it was interesting listening to Alex talk about it because he's kind of where I was like a few years ago when I was just discovering this stuff where he was like, well, you know, where do we draw the line, right? Um, uh -huh. On... Oh, like scale plus chromatic yeah, note. Like adding notes or whatever. So he said beyond seven and eight note scales, um, you know. Yeah. You know, but I mean, it's like, well, why draw the line there though, you know? Yeah. No, I mean, every note, because he was saying, you know, or when does it become, you know, just chromaticism, right? Mm -hmm. Added to a scale, which I mean, that's what it is, is chromaticism added to a scale. But like every scale, really, if you go from pentatonic, every one of the scales that Alan deals with is an add note scale from the pentatonic. You add a right. note, six note, pen, you know, hexatonic. Right. Version of that pentatonic. You add another note, you get like the diatonic scale, right? The major scale or whichever note you add, depending. Um, you add another note, you get a bebop scale. You know, you add another note, you get the nine note scales, you know, and then one more note and you get this scale. You know? Yeah. We draw the line at fucking 11, Alex. Get to the fucking program, dude. At 10, right? Evolve, man. Evolve. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's interesting just to hear him talk about it because I remember when I thought um, when I thought this stuff had too much chromaticism in it to be useful, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I get where he's coming from, but it's not yeah. until you really dive into these scales and start to hear the difference in the colors and the sounds and the and the extra harmony that you get on top of um, the harmony that the major scale gives you already. Right, mm -hmm. but with the two added notes, you get all this extra harmony. You know, obviously that we talked about in the past videos. But like, um, if you're just thinking of it as like passing tones or whatever, and you're just using it for lines and stuff, then you don't necessarily have to go as deep in investigating the stuff. But like, if you want to use it as a compositional tool, right? Then that's where I think this stuff really shines, man. Is like for me. Yeah, the the added chords, the harmony. Like, we, yeah, we've been listening to like your messy attitudes and stuff. Where, yeah, you you wouldn't derive those directions had you not had this as a sort of framework. Yeah, you know, and this is just one approach. It's just another approach in like the way I see it in my arsenal of things that I have because, um, you know, I mean, I have stuff that is intervallic based type ideas that I'm not really thinking about scales like that stuff I was just playing when you guys came on or whatever mm -hmm. thinking about intervallic kind of ideas and I move them around in different ways and um but I'm not really thinking about a scale necessarily you know mm -hmm. I have ideas like that where it's kind of free and then like um like Garzone's triadic chromatic approach you know I studied that pretty intensively and everything and then uh, but the thing is, you know, and it, you know, there's nothing wrong with all that stuff. I love all that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love free jazz, like uh, Garzone's band, The Fringe. That's one of my favorite things, man. You know, there's an album. I can't remember the name of the album right now, but one of the albums they have, they have like so many. Um, Did you ever see the video of Garzone playing with the monster? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like... Uh, you know, I love that stuff too, the free stuff, you know, sure. but it's it, like, there, that's not where Alan's coming from, you know, sure. but if you want to do that, there's nothing wrong with doing that, right? I'm not here to say there's a right way or a wrong way or anything, right? What I'm telling you is I took what Alan said, I did what Alan said, I found mm -hmm. all the things Alan talked about that he was saying, so he wasn't just full of shit, right? Yeah. And that's all, that's all it is. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, I mean, it's uh, it works. I mean, I think I think it makes uh, certainly makes these sounds accessible. And uh, another great byproduct of it as as a manager of a YouTube channel, I looked at our stats, and we have one point five percent women and zero non-binary, which I thought they would be attracted to the rule, but no rules and you can do anything and be in any I, note <laughs> you know, it exists outside of the framework, yeah. uh, uh, you know, that scales are a social construct, but I guess yeah. they're not interested, <laughs> uh, you know, which is a disappointment, but you know, that's, it's, a, it's a repercussion. I think having you on the channel really manned it up. You have to be, you really have, it seems like you have to have male genitalia to appreciate this stuff for some reason. All the women run for the hills, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Every time I practice it at home, like, my wife is like, what, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing now? It's like, I don't understand what you're doing. And it's like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> of course you don't. It's like, <laughs> go, back. Two of us. go back to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Away. This is a, this is a, this is it's me time now. All right, show us. How, I know there's a tritone missing in there. There's just two notes missing in this 10 note scale because it's right. 10 out of 12 of the notes. Yeah, so it's, uh, oh my God. You start it from where Messian starts it from, right? Okay. So it's the seventh, so that's the scale. But if you start it from B, then you got the like five. So it's like B, five five chromatic notes from B, five chromatic chromatic notes from F. Try to on the part five. in five. Yeah, and you can just move right. it to the tones like that. But you're saying. No, oh, so there's no B flat and no E. So those are missing. I can see how that would mean you have a lot of options. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot. But it also limits certain things, like as you'll see here in a minute. Um, yeah, that's actually, I, I dug into it just like very, in a very shallow way. And one thing I discovered is that I made a whole video that's, again, just straight up wrong, uh, about kind of the parentless whole tone, like the, the whole tone that doesn't have the root, that's just one note away from like, B, all the notes are in melodic minor, except, but you have a flat nine, like if you're playing over a C minor and you're applying a B whole tone. And I would just think about it like, you know, some sort of use of a whole tone without the root, but that scale is a subset of this one. Right. You get that whole tone without the root thing. Yeah, so, I mean, when we go over the subsets, like, I'm, I didn't, this isn't like, you know, I mean, I've got a lot of them here, but, like, I obviously didn't put There's every many to a list. Yeah, it's a lot. But one of the things, though, is that basically every one of the Messian modes, except for mode three, is a subset of this one. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, all the other ones are in there, so. Why, st I mean, I, I've asked this like a bunch of times, but like in your mind, you see the note C as the starting point, just because Messian wrote it that way, or is there any sort of, is there like more application from that note in terms of like how it fits chords or is there? I actually see this scale, I think more as a diminished scale, like a half whole diminished with some added notes. So, in the, so in, the, in the book, right, I had like, if you have the first uh, PDF that I put out or whatever for the, in the mystery, I had a chapter on hybrid diminished scales. I called them hybrid diminished scales. Later, I decided that I was really just making everything way more complicated than they needed to be, and it's really just mode seven anyway, so <laughs> just call it mode seven. So I took that chapter out of the thing, although mm -hmm. the concept of hybrid diminished scales is kind of interesting because 
whole thing, you know, the thing I would find in Holdsworth, some of his lines, and I don't even think I have any examples of these today necessarily. That's fine. But what I would find is I'd find stuff that I kept thinking was diminished. It looked like a diminished scale, but then there would be uh, some notes missing and then like other notes that aren't part of the diminished scale. And I was going like, man, this is really like, what the hell's going on here? Right. And um, then the more I messed with this scale and started seeing it as kind of like, you know, B half whole diminished with added notes, I started seeing that. So the theory was in the book that I talked about was take B half whole diminished. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then omit a note or two. Right. And then add the two notes from this scale that aren't in the diminished scale and create a completely different scale that's still got a diminished flavor to it. Right. Because the lines that Holdsworth was playing, these particular there was particular ones that had like a very strong diminished flavor to them. But they had these extra notes in there, you know. So it's kind of like mode seven dropping some notes. Yeah. Well, you know, like we've talked about, you know, you can play in a scale and not play every note of the scale. Sure. Obviously. Yeah. So he, he could probably just be thinking about this scale. <coughs> thinking about it. Right. All I can tell you, like on this specific thing anyway, because he didn't really talk about it. But what he did talk about was he talked about the diminished scale being lame sometimes because it was so yeah. identifiable. Right. Mm -hmm. He didn't like stuff to be super identifiable. So, um, I thought that it was interesting if you take this mode seven or yeah, mode seven and you think of it as diminished and you drop a note, add one of the, you know, you could just drop one note and then add like the one of the notes from uh, this scale that's not in the diminished scale. And that's a different scale that's still got a strong diminished sound, you know? So you, okay. Yeah. I mean, I see that. So on that train of thought, you would see it as B, half whole diminished with oh. a two and a flat six. Right, that's how I see it. Yeah. yeah. So... So just adding a tritone like that. D flat and G. Right, D flat and G. Yeah. Okay. So... Uh, I think we should not smoke weed when we do this. I can actually find things. <laughs> well, that, that took about eight sessions. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, but uh, so which notes would you, would you, would he drop? Uh, I mean, it wasn't like any particular, I couldn't find like a rhyme or reason to it, right? It was mm -hmm. just, that's when I decided that it was, you know, after thinking about it for a while, but the book was already out with that chapter in it. But after thinking about it for a while, I just decided that it was, although that's an interesting concept and I could probably write a whole book on just that concept. And like, it would be, it's interesting. It might, I might do that, but like, okay. uh, but I think to him, he was probably just thinking about mode seven anyway, you know? Okay. And you'll see like, uh, I mean, the thing that about this scale is that this is the most controversial one because <sighs> it's got, you know, 10 notes in it and five half steps in it, which goes against his self-imposed rule of no yeah. more than four and no more than nine notes, right? No more than four half steps, no more than nine notes. But this scale, along with all the other Messian scales, are in the Slonimsky book, and he talks about the Slonimsky book, you know, quite a bit on in clinics and stuff, right? People right. ask about it. And he worked out of it, and so he could have found this scale in there. It wouldn't have been one like when when you log all the scales. This you don't find this one. I mean, I found it if you if you loop because I did log the ten and eleven note scales too. So I did find it, but he wouldn't have found it because he only logged up to nine mm -hmm. notes supposedly. So um, so I think he probably found it in uh, the Slonimsky book and just okay. started messing with it, and then so he didn't really think about. Um, maybe when he was talking about, you know, only having nine notes and four half steps, no more than four half steps, he probably wasn't really thinking about this scale because it's not one of the ones he logged. He just found it in a, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, when I hear this one, some, something about the sounds from this sound the craziest to my ear. Yeah. It's just like, you know, 
like really sounds um, like organized chaos. Yeah, that's what it is. It's kind of yeah. Does. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so, so we yeah. How how do we start? So to get into like more scales that people might be familiar with or that you might be familiar with. Mm -hmm. uh, basically got like a C major scale with no third in here. Mm -hmm. One of the subsets. Okay. All right. Got a uh, C harmonic minor. Straight up. It straight up. Got B flat harmonic minor in here. Really? <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. That's Imagine the context where both of those would work. Uh, that one's not in there. Sorry. I had like a note oh. myself about not being in there. Oh, sorry. Because I got like this sheet with a bunch of stuff on oh, it. Oh, so no B flat. Right. So, yeah. so, yes, yeah. the C harmonic minor, C uh -huh. minor. Uh huh. F sharp harmonic minor, so the tritone of those two. Right? I see. Oh, so you have F sharp harmonic and melodic minor. I I did notice that. I think we, we talked about it. Like when I was watching one of Ricardo's videos, because he explained mode seven as being two minor pentatonic scales, a tritone away. Yep. So you can think of it that way too. Like this one for this key would be like D minor pentatonic and A flat minor pentatonic. That gives you all ten notes. Right. Okay. Wait. How am I? How am I so. Mm. So if I'm thinking about it from with B being the starting point, like as a, as a half hole diminished. Then I'm just trying to look for a way to like visualize the connection between that and the pentatonic. So like from its minor third, I mean, I don't know uh, if that's useful in some way, but. So with, with that, Anything that I have from the root, I would have from the tritone. Uh, as far as, well, those two, not necessarily everything works in tritones. There's certain things, um, certain subsets I found that were like not working like that. But really? So, like, stuff does. That C major, no third. I would also have a G major, no third. G flat major, no third. Yeah. <laughs> And then the harmonic minor and the melodic minor. So that's cool. With no E flat if you're... No, there's, there's no E. Oh, okay. There's no E and no B flat. Oh, okay, okay. So, so but that that's super cool. Like, if I can move... That's why fucking Ricardo with the, with the melodic minor shit. What are you talking about? The melodic minor, a tritone away. That's, that's his trick. Oh! That's, a, that's what the fuck that's he's doing! Works. That's why it works! Oh, too bad we already put out that video. Ah, motherfucker! <laughs> we keep putting, like, fake news up on YouTube. Be like, we get it! And they're like, oh, we don't get it at all. Yeah, like, so this scale has uh, B augmented in it, but it doesn't have the tritone, the F augmented scale. Not triads. Because mm. F augmented has an E in it. Right. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, well, you know what? No, B isn't in there either because it's got the B flat. And yeah, it has B flat. Yeah. Yeah, what, I'm guessing whatever you can find in one, you would have to be able to find a tritone away because of the way it's laid out. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. It should be that way, but I guess I. I was looking at this yesterday. I thought I was having a B. Um, wasn't paying attention to the B flat being in the B. So, yeah, or whatever. And then I was going, but there's an E in the F sharp. So yeah, I thought that was weird too. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that, that thing with the melodic minors just blew my fucking mind. Like, because because I was 
you know, I would always to play out. I would always play the melodic minor of like you know off the fifth, like treating like a pretend five. Like if I'm playing over a C minor vamp, I weave lines between C minor and A flat melodic minor, which is typical, or do stuff like a minor third up. Uh, but Ricardo, like on Ricardo Soriso's videos, he kept playing like C. C melodic minor to F sharp melodic minor and it sounded fucking killer and I was thinking that I was never I never did that and it's all here it, yeah uh, yeah so the melodic minor stuff you got like the B whole tone um, E flat harmonic major second E flat harmonic major E flat or D flat flat E flat C sharp or if you want okay. to call it so, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool that you have like a C melodic minor to a D flat harmonic major for like lines. Okay. All right. Uh, so that one's in there. Uh, C melodic minor, or um, I already said C melodic minor. C, uh, G harmonic major, right? So right, because they're a tritone away. It, this is dope. I, I this is actually really fucking cool. Just I love the symmetry of it, to where like you can kind of easily visualize yeah. one of these and then move it. Yeah, that's I think that's the majority of subsets I have in there. Mm -hmm. so what do we do? We got C major, no third. We've got the two pentatonics, D minor and A flat. Uh, C harmonic minor, F sharp harmonic minor, C melodic minor, F sharp melodic minor, B whole tone, B half hold diminished, mm -hmm. um, and G and D flat harmonic major. G and, yep. Right. What else do you want, man? Shit. <laughs> 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 That's a lot. Right that, is, that is a lot. So there's okay. other stuff, but... Uh, so what are what are typical applications so, oh, so everything in any of those scales that's like everything everything anything in any of those scales yep but what's typical like what's uh what's well, something that you see in the music more than other like in one situation more like okay in that kind of open vamp world I've got some lines here. Perfect. Uh, to look at. And uh, all right, hang on a minute. Let me just make sure I got the right file. So, I got a file, a bunch of other notes on other shit, and then I got all confused. So. Yeah. Well, uh, you're on your screen, so make sure you're not seeing the midget porn. <laughs> Oh uh, man, I don't do that on this computer. I got a special computer for yeah. that. <laughs> That's smart. A little tiny, tiny one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So most of these, though, well, let's see. Like, they're free stuff, right? So, like that. Um, so, except for the Texas. So, on Texas, that one had like, uh, well, we'll come back to that one in a minute. But so that solo. The carbon solo, yeah. So right here, that's straight F mode seven, right? So F mode seven uh, will not have. A and E flat? Right. Okay. Like that solo, this is like the B flat jazz minor, this part. That's B flat jazz minor add flat five flat seven. Then he goes into uh, this thing. So 
So this is the chromatic movement we talked yeah. about. I remember. Then this is mode seven. Up to there. So that's... That is F mode seven? No, that's D flat actually mode seven. That D flat mode seven. Um Okay, so D flat mode seven means no F, no B. Okay, and that's I see it's just moving that shape in tritones like we talked about. Yep. Yeah. Um then there's one from this tune bent by you. Um it's C mode seven and it goes. Well, like we talked about, because I add this to my chromatic movements sometimes, this thing. So we talked about that a little bit um, last time on the chromatic movements, but I was doing it like down here. So like, uh, um, man, I just lost my train of thought. I am out of it today, man. No, no, no. You're saying you're saying uh, that it's something yeah. from mode seven you're adding to your chromatic movements. So that's been by you lick. That's okay. So can you can we break that down real quick? What's going on there? And which 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 mode seven is it? It's a C mode seven. So starting at the note D. Right. sit on uh this one i don't even have a chord for it okay it's just, just I, how would you how would you could like what would you do it on i mean this i would do it on uh you could do it on anything that doesn't any chord that doesn't have uh b flat or e in it so any any chord <laughs> oh my god i guess i don't think that way at all <laughs> so it's good like, just like a D minor. <laughs> I mean, it's cool. Okay. Like this C mode seven has like C minor major seven in it, D flat minor major seven, or D flat major seven, D major seven. G major seven, A flat major seven, A major seven, B minor seven flat five, F minor, E flat major seven. Ah! <laughs> Make it stop. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just some of the chords, you know. Can't you just learn the lick and hope? <laughs> hope the chord doesn't have notes. Uh, yeah, you can. I mean, this, I mean, you can do whatever the hell you want to do. But <laughs> it's like, but so yeah. like so let's do this line because this line is from Texas. I actually have the chord. Okay, yeah, that's that. G major nine. It's on a G major nine chord, sharp eleven. The line, I gotta see if I can even play it. Let's see. Uh, I don't even remember it. What was it? 18. It. 
something like that. So he's playing C sharp mode seven. C sharp uh, mode seven on a G major on a G median. And that's kind of the same. It's a try that that thing he's applying is a tritone away, so you could just think about it like think about it that way too. Yeah. Okay. What the fuck was, were you doing here? Like tritones? Uh, this is like not a tritone. I mean, like the interval, uh, like a tritone stretch on this. Oh, thing. yeah, yeah. So it's like. Yeah. But it's just this symmetrical pattern that he's moving, you know? Uh -huh. Something like that. So it's like those kind of like, what do you call it? Like a triad with a flatted fifth kind of thing. I can see that. And it's got the root in it. Um, but you have a sharp nine in there, too. Yeah. That gives it the funky sound. Out there. Yeah, it's pretty. And then the flat nine on top. Yeah. So that's a pretty out thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just like flat nines on major seven chords are uh, as out as... Uh, <laughs> They're awesome. <laughs> They're the best sound. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's that one. Uh, then there's the one in um, the drums were yellow, where he moves this pattern in uh, whole steps. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's the... Is that right? All steps. What, what's happening? So this is just the one mode seven part. So... so, oh. so then he goes... see so it's the six is moving in tritones and that moves in whole steps in that right he's taking that pattern and then he's repeating it i see it jumped the gun right and then uh exposed against weed it's horrible, it ruins your brain. So it's uh, 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 I can't even remember it. But but that 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 pattern could you just move it in whole steps indefinitely? Is it like always gonna be a part of that mode? Well, this is the thing, right? So he's in like, so here he's in C mode seven. Uh, then he's in D mode seven. Then he's in uh, uh, E. remember that part yeah yeah but but okay so but that's a thing i dig that that's easy like this line is one of the ones that convinced me the most that he was actually thinking about mode seven because um moving because he's skipping certain notes and doing patterns in specific 
ways in this thing that like, it's not just, uh, you know, if I was moving a shape. You know, it's not just that shape over and over. It's like, he's moving this. Uh, moving it in a particular way and it's like the chances of playing a pattern like that and then ha moving it in whole and in, in having it end up being mode seven in whole steps it seems pretty uh unlikely <laughs> yeah it, you're so lucky that you were right about what he was doing because it's like if if you were just if you're wrong about it, like you know your wife and kids had to like do an intervention, you'd be like with newspaper clippings on the floor. Now I swear there's a system. It's like it's uh, just shapes, Brett. It's just shapes. You know, it could have been a very different story. It's not even <laughs> about me being wrong or right, right? It's just I took what he said and did what yeah. he said he did. And yeah, yeah, no, no, it's 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 cool. I mean, it's cool. It's cool that you found it. Um, all right, so what's that, so that's great. What what are some other mode seven things? We like with a good. It's this one is unlike the others, in the sense that like there's too much like there's too much shit in all of them. But at least those ones like have kind of a manageable amount of uh, of shapes in them, like would. Finding the Holdsworth shapes inside this one be like a worthwhile pursuit. I mean, like, so look, so my etude, see if I can play it slow or something, because uh, I'm having a freaking pretty bad day, apparently. <laughs> I, I think you're doing great, Brad. So that was from mode six we talked about, remember? Right. Um, but everything I'm about to play is in C mode seven. Uh, remember it all but like all that stuff is Holdsworth stuff that I took because mode I, six is inside mode seven so you could use any of your shit that's not mode three right so all your like mode six stuff um <laughs> all your mode five stuff you know uh your mode four stuff all that stuff's in there um all of that stuff you know yeah okay this line was, uh, so that part that went. Yeah, I took that from uh, the drums were yellow. He does it up here. So I just took that, I found it in, I wanted to find it in C mode seven, because I knew that, that was mode seven. So, uh, Anyway, I found that, I found this mode six thing, and then I just started putting like some of his movements um, together, you know? Yeah. Etude, and I can't play it, but. What's your process? Like, I mean, I know, I know like with your etudes, it seems like uh, a lot of that stuff is impossible to retain in the long term. So you kind of like have to work it up a little bit you know, to get it kind of performance ready. But like, what's your process, I guess, writing it verse and then practicing it? Is it like writing it mostly? Like, I, I, I'm, at, I'm a little bit at a loss with like the etude thing. Like I, I've always, I've never really been able to focus in that way. Like I can write tunes, but like I can't sit down and like write, well, that's kind of what it is. I mean, it's like little mini tunes to me, you know? So, and you write it like straight into like Guitar Pro or something? Yeah, just type it into there. I mean, usually I'm just, you know, either um, I'm kind of messing with this, whatever scale I happen to be working on and I'm improvising in it and I go, oh, that was cool. And I just write it down and then I just kind of play that part again and I improvise from there. 
And then if it's cool, I write that down. You know what I mean? So it's like I'm slowing down the improvisation process, basically. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of have it to stare at and you just work it up. Stuff that I don't even really work it up. I mean, it's just, it's more of a, just to help me see what the possibilities are. So have some idea of what's going on in that scale and how to string some ideas together through it, you know, because mm -hmm. with these scales, there's so much um, possibility in there, you know? So it's yeah. really a way for me, you know, to find shapes, find my own movements, find like things like that, you know, and be able to hook it together in a particular sound, you know? Mm -hmm. and, um, I don't really learn my etudes in like, you know, I write them and I have my students kind of go through them and stuff like that, but um, just for technique reasons or even for just so they can see how to use this stuff, how to like, you know, make lines in these scales, you know? Mm -hmm. So, Do you have a lot of students currently that are like studying down stuff with you? Uh, yeah, a few, not a lot. Yeah, like a few. yeah. So, yeah. So uh, then yeah. like some of a lot of those guys that are doing Allen stuff, they'll just take a lesson like every couple of weeks or every month. Sure. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Load me up and then like so I load them up like with a bunch of stuff and then they come back when they're ready, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I absolutely it's it's uh yeah. Yeah, it's it's a lot to take in for sure. Um all righty. So in <laughs> so we've got like all the shapes, right? So with this scale, you do the same kind of thing, like, uh, or I did, right? You try to take uh -huh. um, all those Holdsworth minor third, half step, half step, minor third, right. all that stuff. And uh, find it, right? This one has more of those pentatonic -y kind of shapes too. Yeah, there's some of that stuff, but like I've got, uh, so like the minor third half step, you can do off the fourth, the flat six, the sixth, the seventh, the ninth, and the minor third, right? Up a minor third. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Repeat that. So if I'm thinking, if I'm thinking about this kind of like it, it's groups of like a thing and a thing, the tritone away, right? So it's like on that first, like, let's talk about C mode. Well, seven. How, let me show you how I did this sure. nine scale with this one i did it a little different uh because i didn't want to just do the tritone thing so obviously you can but what i did i'm gonna have to try to freaking read it because i'm not gonna remember this whole freaking thing so like this right. might ask that thing like look if you just take and this kind of reminds me you know of uh that thing we just that holdsworth just did in the drums were yelling that lick but I didn't switch mode sevens. Like, and I'm not modulating through mode sevens. Sure. I'm trying one mode seven. So, like, if I just start from the first fret, uh, and then it goes to, what was it? Where did I just go? Seven. Objective starting points in the first position here was it was F, E flat. Yeah. Okay. Fly it up to C. You got that shape. Ring. Right. Okay. Then you slide up a half step from there. And you got it on these two strings and on the side. Right, so you get right. I fucked up. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, that one. So then that just repeats. You just take that and you move it up, and it repeats. I would repeat the tritone away. Yep. Yeah, so it will start on B. Ah, oh, sick. So. Oh. 
I see. Yeah, so you can get that shape. So, like, you know, I mean, it's it's dictating kind of your string skipping and stuff, too, you know. Mm -hmm. So the other thing about, like, you know, doing it like this, where you're thinking about a scale and you're trying to play that shape only in the places that exist in this scale, you get things that you just wouldn't get if you were thinking about that shape and you had 12 notes to think about. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes total sense. Okay. Uh, so yeah, there's that one. Oh, then the other thing I like to do with this scale, um, it's like some intervallic stuff, right? Like, uh, like that kind of thing, which is, uh, so this is kind of like the cross the neck thing, so you'll probably like it. How's that go? And thirds. Yeah. Then. Oh, I see. That kind of thing? Yeah. I'm probably talking that up. So, uh, are these major thirds? So, uh, and then to the. So, that's going from D. Uh huh. Okay. I see. Yeah. So intervallic ideas you can come up with that sound pretty. Um, so yeah, man. I mean, that's mostly the kind of stuff I try to do with it when I get a chance to do anything with it. You know. Yeah. So I got a lot of work to do on this one myself. So. Jesus Christ, man! It's really never ending. How do you, I mean, how do you approach maintaining something from your your before Holdsworth days in yeah. like in, in improvisation? Like how for me, like I, I and that's the thing I, I think like mentally I'm struggling with the most like you know I it's not very intuitive for me to um, throw this stuff you know to kind of I don't know like where is the sweet spot for you between just like blues licks and this um I mean all my stuff that I had is still there right yeah, it uh, depends on whatever tune or track I'm playing on and what I hear on it. You know, yeah. like I'm. So when you first sent me that C minor track, I wasn't really hearing a bunch of Holdsworth stuff on it. I was hearing more bluesy kind of stuff and more, um, you know, maybe Scott Henderson type lines where it was more jazz language oriented and stuff like that, but with gain and then after I just sat with it, like one night, I actually freaking was so sick of the book. I was like, fuck this man. So I just came in here and I just turned that track on and I just started messing with it. And I had my Holdsworth tone on and like that stuff started coming out. Yeah. Then, but like at first it wasn't. Yeah. So, um, but there's certain tracks, you know, like, so on a blues, right. If I'm playing like a, like a track, blues. or something like that, I'm not going to play a bunch of Holdsworth stuff on it. Yeah. <laughs> <The blues. laughs> yeah. You know, and then like if it's uh you know Stella by Starlight or whatever, like I'm not gonna play a bunch of this stuff. I'm probably gonna play like jazz language stuff, you know. I mean it's fun to 
think about playing this stuff on it and stuff like that, but it doesn't necessarily sound right. Good. Yeah. It's not necessarily the best for me, right? Because, like, I, I mean, I love Stella by Starlight. I love standards. I love hearing people play that stuff. I don't necessarily want to hear them butcher it with a bunch of Messian shit, you know, <laughs> myself included. I don't want to, just because I can doesn't, you know, mean I should. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's, that's the, like the hard thing, the hard thing about sort of approaching this from a sort of normal aesthetic like you know what i mean like people that just listen to sort of sort of not that dissonant of music and enjoy that kind of stuff too like holdsworth himself was just so committed to that level of dissonance you know so it's like you have to it's it's weird it's like it, it tempts you to like make this complete commitment to it without looking at it kind of like a tool or like right. this well, like, um you know, I mean, he was like very committed to his vision, right? He had a vision and he was committed to that vision and he wouldn't let anybody tell him anything else, right? If they wanted him to do anything else, he just didn't do it. He just did what he wanted to do, right? Like, right. like when they did Road Games and all that's the recording of that album, that was a big, turned into a big disaster. And like, you know, if you read about it, but um, yeah. because they were trying to get him to do stuff that he didn't really want to do, you know, and it was a big fight whole thing yeah. right and the album ended up only being you know not even a full album it's basically an ep right it's like yeah well, that last the, the thing that was supposed to be his last album with virgil he went in there and erased everything yeah it's yeah just, you know like he recorded the solos of, apparently like the, the album was finished a few times and yeah. everything he just went and like erased everything completely so yeah. like oh so, i mean one of the things I've done, like, you know, like, again, I haven't had as much time as I want to work on this stuff, and especially in multiple styles and stuff like that. It's just I've had time to be like, this might be cool, right? So instead of, um, like, playing on a, you know, vamp, like a D minor vamp or something in a jazz kind of context, instead of using all those shapes... Holdsworth shapes and a Holdsworth tone and all that sort of stuff. Like I messed around with just seeing triads, right? Kind of stuff, which you end up getting kind of uh, this triadic chromatic kind of vibe from it. Well, triads from what? So I'm playing jazz major flat three, flat six, right? So if wow. you just that scale and you just play, you know, you've got this augmented triad now in there. Right, you've got uh, A flat major triad, you've got E flat major triad. So you get like, uh... so you can mess around with those I see, so you're, you're extracting like a bit of harmony from that thing to work, but you're avoiding the shapes that will give you like the um, Allen kind of thing. The Allen thing, right, just because, you know, that's not necessarily what I want to hear on a standard from myself when I am playing over one, you know? I want to hear more Martino-ish type lines and because, I mean, he's my biggest influence, right? Yeah. I hear like Adam Rogers or like uh, Jonathan Kreisberg, like those guys, Rosenwinkel, those guys are big influences on me and I love yeah. their playing, I love their compositions. Um, and when I think about standards or i think about modern jazz you know it's not really um not that you can't do it but just to me um i'd rather just hear those guys do that what they do and hear alan do what he does right sure yeah and for me if i'm going to play something in that vein the vein of like kreisberg or something like that or a standard then i don't really you know I mean, I mess around with approaching it like Alan might and doing the shapes and writing etudes that do that. Like I've got an etude over Stella where I'm using all those, all those bunch of different Messian modes and I'm using those shapes and everything. And it's like, well, you can do it, but it's not really what I want to hear on that stuff. Hmm. Okay. Did you ever hear Kreisberg's 
Alan impersonation? Yeah. I've got that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was pretty funny. Yeah, I had him on. I had him on uh, years ago on, on our when I before Nick when I I had like a thing called Music Real Talk. So I had him on for an interview and he was showing us some of his Alan uh, thing. I don't think he went as deep into it, uh, you know. But he, he does play with like that Nelson Veris guy who. Right, it, he's messy on stuff. Yeah, he's a me he, he messes with the messy on quite a bit. He does it his way. He's not doing it the way Alan does it, and he's not using sure. the types of shapes and stuff, at least from what I've heard. No, it's like more like counterpoint and took it that direction. And then, yeah. like, you know, I mean, with the Kreisberg thing, I have that album where he's uh, got the fusion kind of thing going on. There's like a mm -hmm. range of tunes. You've got a thing where it's like this rock kind of fusion thing and then you've got a tune where you're like oh this is like the Kreisberg that's to be yeah. today you can hear like it's there <laughs> sure sure yeah it's just he's just like kind of making a smorgage of what he likes before right. he changes the direction he's going in right it's like a more of a smorgasbord of what's... yeah it's like a typical first album like I can do anything <laughs> <laughs> before he became like you know the straight ahead jazz guy yeah yeah. You know what's really interesting? I don't know if people know this, and I don't know if it's him for sure, but there's a clinic on YouTube. It's the Alan at um, the Blue Note in New York. Okay. There's a guy in the audience asking questions, like very intelligent questions, and I swear to God, it's Kreisberg. Sounds just like him. <laughs> you, can't, you can't see him? You can't see him. You can just see, like, the back of his head. He's got dark hair and... Uh, Alan's, you know, avoiding the questions and kind of cracking jokes and stuff. And then he goes, uh, the guy, I think it's Kreisberg. I'm convinced it's Kreisberg, but. I'm going to text him after this and ask. So, so you're not, uh, he goes, so you're not going to answer my question then? Because <laughs> <laughs> Alan was like, and this, like, you know, Kreisberg had this big, long, elaborate thing, right? Like, oh, symmetrical patterns, and I can kind of hear this and that or whatever, Coltrane. But I can't really hear, he's talking about how he can't really hear this lineage that he hears in Coltrane and stuff like that and everything. And and Alan just goes, it sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> long uh, Kreisberg breakdown of it, you know? Yeah. Text him and see if it's him. Let me know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I surely will. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. Cool, man. Well, for the people watching at home, uh, buy the book in the mystery. Um, all the information's in the description below. Also, we'll have a link to where you can buy the supplementary materials for uh, the lesson with mode seven. And I think next time we should kind of, I mean, if you're down to just go to the beginning and do it in a slower kind of way, <laughs> cool. I think, I think that would be very beneficial for us, hopefully for the audience at home. I'm sure. No, but I mean, I, there's probably like, you know, at least 10 or 15 people who just mastered everything, uh, you know, watching but for the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice because I feel like I've got nothing uh, after the day. Um, but I want to say one thing about the book. So, sure. if I, since uh, just in case anybody's bought the book off Amazon, right? Because um, I had gone through and found a bunch of typos that this company I hired made when I got it up there. So anyway, for anybody that bought it, uh, I'm going to replace it. If you email me, brettsteinmusic at yahoo.com, I'll replace the ones that you bought. Cool. So people cool. know. Very good. All right, man. Well, we'll see you next week. And uh, thank you for your time and knowledge and wisdom, sage wisdom. And uh, we'll see you soon. All right, man. All right.